Hello. Today we will be folding an origami multi-point star designed by Elan Garibi. This is a great modular model and the units are very easy to fold. This model requires six or more square sheets of paper. Each unit is folded from one square and the great thing about this model is that there's no set amount of units that you have to fold. It takes six units to close the star which is why you need six sheets of paper but you can easily add more points to the star by folding more units. So folding seven units will result in a seven point star. Eight units will result in an eight point star and so on. So I'll be teaching you how to fold and assemble the units, but it's completely up to you to decide how many units you plan on folding. I recommend using smaller paper to fold this model. Paper anywhere between four and 15 centimeters or about one and a half to six inches is recommended. Thicker paper will also help keep the units together. So paper such as Tant is also recommended. So after you've chosen your paper and decided how many units you plan on folding, start with your first square with the colored side up. The color that you have facing up will also be the color of the completed unit, so you want to keep that in mind. And we're going to start by folding in half vertically. So take this right edge and fold it over to the left edge. Align the corners and the edges. Then make a crease. And then unfold. And now we're going to fold in half horizontally. So take this bottom edge and fold it up to the top edge. Again, align the corners and the edges and then make a crease and then unfold. Now we're going to fold all four corners into the center where those two creases intersect. So let's start with this bottom right corner and we're just going to pull it up like this, align it with the intersection and then make a crease. And then we want to do the same thing on the top right. So just pull it down like this, again aligning it with the intersection and then make a crease. And then on the top left, we're going to do the same thing. So just pull it down, align it with the intersection, then make your crease. And then we're going to do it one last time on the bottom left by pulling it up and doing the same exact thing. So just align it with that intersection, make your crease, and then you should have this. Now we're going to turn the model over. Now we're going to align this left edge with this horizontal crease here. So we're going to start by lifting up this edge and letting the trap layer out from underneath. And then what you want to do is align the edge with the crease and work your way over to the right. And you want to make your crease as you go, but then stop once you hit this vertical crease because you don't want to make a crease that extends past it. So once you've done that, then you can unfold by tucking it right back underneath. And then we're going to do the same thing on the right. So we're going to start by taking this edge here and aligning it with this horizontal crease. So we're just going to pull it up like this, again letting out that layer from underneath, and then starting at the right corner and working our way over to the left, making your crease as you go. Just like this. And then stop your crease once you hit that vertical crease there. And then you can unfold by tucking it right back underneath. And now we're going to rotate the paper and do the same exact thing on this side. And we're going to start with this left edge here and we're going to align it with this horizontal crease. So we're just going to lift up this edge, again letting out the layer from underneath. Then starting at the left corner and working our way over to the right, we're just going to align the edge with the crease. So then make your crease as you go, and then make sure you stop once you hit that vertical crease. Then you can unfold by simply tucking that layer back underneath, and then you'll see that you've added that crease there. Then you want to do the same thing one last time on the right. So we're going to align this edge with that horizontal crease. Again, let out that layer from underneath. Then starting at the right corner, work your way over to the left, aligning the edge with the crease. Then make your crease and stop it at that vertical crease. And then unfold by tucking that layer right back underneath. And now you'll see that you've added these four creases here. Now we're going to create a rabbit ear along these three creases here. And we're going to do that by taking these edges and aligning them with the horizontal crease just like we did before. Only this time we're taking the left and right edges and folding them in at the same time. So we're going to start by lifting both the left and right edges and then letting out that layer from underneath on both sides. And then you can flatten it out along creases you already created just like this. And then you'll notice that you have this point sticking up in the middle. You want to push on each side of it just to flatten it out a bit. And then you don't want to push it to the left or right because you don't want to make any unnecessary creases. So keep it straight up and down for now. And then we're going to do the same thing on the top. So we're going to create another rabbit ear along these three creases 
and we're just going to align these two edges with that horizontal crease once again. So we're just going to lift up the two edges, again letting out the layers from underneath, and then pushing down along existing creases, and then pinching this middle point here just to flatten it out, and then your model should look like this. Now we want the model to lie flat. So in order to do that, we first have to pick it up like this. And what we really want to do is fold it in half along that horizontal crease. But an easier way to do it is to just push on both sides until they come together. So just push the two sides together like this. And then what you should be left with is a flat square. Now we're going to fold the left and right edges into these two vertical edges here. But before you do that, you want to make sure that your unit opens up from the bottom just like this just so it's properly oriented for the next step. We're going to start with this right edge and we're just going to align it with this vertical edge here. So just pick it up like this and starting at the bottom of the model we're just going to work our way up aligning the two edges. So just make your crease like this. You can go all the way. And then once you're done you'll notice that this edge aligns with the edge on the layer behind it. Then once you've done that side you want to do the same thing on the left. So we're just going to pull it in and align it with that vertical edge the same way we did on the other side. So start at the bottom and work your way up, aligning the two edges, and then make your crease. Now we're going to turn the model over and do the same exact thing. And again we're going to start with this right edge and we're just going to align it with these vertical edges here. So we're just going to pull it in like this. Starting at the bottom and working our way up, we're just going to align the edges together. Just like this. Then make your crease. And again it should align with the layers behind it. Then you want to do the same thing one last time on the left. So just pull this edge in and align it with the vertical edges just like we did before. Then make your crease and you should have this. This is one completed unit. Now it's up to you to decide how many more units you need to fold. You need to fold at least six units to complete the star and I find that the more units you fold the easier the star is to complete. I'm going to be showing the assembly with ten units but again you can use as many units as you'd like. I'm also going to be making my star with alternating colors just to make the assembly a bit easier to understand. To start the assembly, you're going to need two units. Now, if you're doing alternating colors, make sure you have one of each color. So now we're going to start by opening up the pocket in this first unit. So to do that, what you want to do is separate the layers on the left and the right of the model. So we're just going to open this up and pull the right layers to the right and the left layers to the left. So it opens up to a pocket. Another easier way to do this is to just push down on the top of the model and push up from the bottom of the model at the same time. So just push in like this and you'll see that the two layers will start to separate by themselves. So once you've opened the pocket in this first unit, you're going to look at the second unit and find the tabs. Now the tabs are really just these first two layers on each side of the model. So you have one tab and two tabs and you're going to be inserting those tabs inside of this pocket here. So now what you want to do is lift up the second unit and to put the two units together all you want to do is insert this left tab in the left side of the pocket and this right tab in the right side of the pocket. So you can just push both tabs inside of the pocket, make sure they go to their correct sides, and then once you've done that, then you can just close up the pocket and then flatten out the model by pushing it down from the top, just like this. Now what you want to do is lift up this very top layer on the second unit, so just hold it so it's straight up and down. Then you'll notice that there's two trap layers behind this one, and you want to pull them out as far as they'll go. So there's one on the right, so just pull it out like that, and there's also one on the left. And then what you want to do with these is just wrap them around the second unit. So you're just going to push them into the middle along existing creases. So just push them in like this, one on both sides, and then once you have that, you can flatten out the model by pushing this top layer right back down. So to connect the third unit, you're going to do the same exact thing. Now remember, if you're doing alternating colors, make sure you're keeping up with the pattern. So we're going to start by opening up the pocket in the second unit. So just push on the top and the bottom of the model, or you can just separate the layers yourself. So once you've found the pocket, then you want to find the tabs on this unit. So you're going to do that by grabbing the top two layers on each side, just like this. So you should have one, two tabs. Then you're going to be inserting these tabs into the pocket of the second unit. So again, we're going to lift up this third unit here. And what we're going to do is insert this left tab in the left side of the pocket and this right tab in the right side of the pocket, just like we did before. So we're just going to put both tabs inside of the pocket, make sure they each go to their correct side, then close up the pocket, and then flatten out the model by pushing down on the top, just like this. Then what you want to do is again lift up this very top layer, so just pull it up so it's straight up and down. Then you'll have those two trap layers behind this one. So we're going to pull both of those out, 
So just pull out one from each side, just like this. And then we're going to wrap them around this third unit simply by pushing in along existing creases. So just push them in like this. And once you've done that, you can just flatten out the model by pushing this top layer back down. And now you've connected three units. Now we're going to connect the fourth unit the same way. Now if you're alternating colors, make sure you keep up with the pattern. Then we first want to open up the pocket on this third unit. So you can either push on the top and the bottom of the model, or just spread the layers yourself. So once you've found the pocket, then you want to find the tabs on this fourth unit. So you're just going to take the top two layers on each side of the model, just like this. And then we're going to be inserting these tabs inside of this pocket here. So again, we're going to pick up this fourth unit, and then we're going to insert this left tab in the left side of the pocket, and this right tab in the right side of the pocket. So we're going to start by putting both tabs inside of the pocket, making sure they go to their correct sides, then closing up the pocket, and then flattening out the model by pushing down from the top, just like this. Then, you want to lift up this very top layer once again, so hold it so it's straight up and down. Then again, you'll notice that you have those two trap layers, and you want to pull them out from each side. So there's one on the right, and one on the left. Then you want to wrap them around this fourth unit by pushing them into the center along existing creases. So just push them in like this, and then close up the model by pushing down this top layer here and now you've connected four units. I'm not going to explain how to connect every unit because they're all connected the same way. But remember, you need at least six units to complete the star, and you can connect as many units as you'd like. So just continue connecting your units the same way until you get to the last one. Once you've completed your last unit, you're going to do pretty much the same thing and connect it to the first unit. So to do this, we first have to find the pocket in this last unit. So open it up by pushing on the top and the bottom, or simply separating the layers by yourself. Then once you've found this pocket, we have to find the tabs on the first unit. So to find the tabs, you have to release the rest of the units from underneath the last one, just like this. Just so you can see this first unit here. Then once you've found the first unit, you want to find the two tabs, which are basically the top layers on each side of the model. And then you're going to insert these two tabs into that pocket of the last unit. So you're going to bring the two units together like this, inserting the tabs inside of the pocket. And then you want to make sure that each tab goes in its correct side of the pocket. Then close up the pocket, just like we did before. And then we have to do one more thing. We have to release these two trap layers from behind the first unit, just like this. And then once you've done that, you can just wrap them around the first unit along existing creases. So just push them in like this. And then once you've done that, your multipoint star is complete. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial on how to fold an origami multipoint star designed by Elan Garibi. Please comment, rate, subscribe, and thank you for watching.